Hi there everyone, in this video we're going to be going through the normal distribution. This is the first video and this is a continuation from the previous unit where we were talking about continuous random variables. So the normal distribution is a type of continuous random variable. So I'm going to do an introduction and talk about the way we can uh, work out problems using this probably most prevalent uh, model for data that we have. So here's the syllabus here to start off with. Um, first of all, identify contexts such as naturally occurring variation that are suitable for modeling by normal random variables. Well, I'm going to address that one now. Um, there's just so many different situations where a normal distribution is appropriate. So what do I mean by a normal distribution? It's this kind of shaped curve, um, bell-shaped curve. It's also known as the Gaussian distribution um, after Carl Gauss, a mathematician. But this distribution, when you're looking at it, you've got frequency, the frequency density along the vertical axis, and along the bottom here, you've got height or weight or time or so many different variables. And what we find is, is that most of the values, most of the measurements here are centered around the middle of the distribution. And there's a variation that goes out from that. Um, there's not, there's very few really uh, tall or people in this in this case here, and there's also very few really short people at the bottom. Most people are grouped around the middle, and that grouping follows this kind of curve called the normal distribution, this bell-shaped curve. Uh, the other thing that we know is approximately the how uh, many standard deviations people fall within that uh, bell-shaped curve. So what kinds of things are modeled by this normal distribution? Time taken to do a test, length of turtle shells, weight of year 12 students, height of year 5 students. In fact, there's just so many um, different measurements of things naturally occurring in nature that follow this normal distribu distribution pattern. The parameters of this distribution, we use two Greek letters here. The first one, mu, that signifies the mean of the distribution. So in this example that we had here, the mean was around about 122, right in the middle there, and sigma for the standard deviation. So the standard deviation, again, is measuring the spread here. How far spread out from the mean are these values here? Different standard deviations, it's different normal distributions have different standard deviations. So if I wanted to, I could draw another normal distribution that might look like that. Now that distribution is also a normal distribution, but the standard deviation is less. They're more tightly centered around the mean, whereas the one that I just had got there in red, um, the standard deviation would be a little bit bigger. So that's the, um, the mean, the standard deviation. And just note, this is really important, that when we write this down, that we're writing that second number there is not the standard deviation, but it is the variance, okay? The standard deviation squared that we write second in those brackets. Another thing we know about the normal distribution is that we know 68% of all of heights or weights fall within one standard deviation from the mean. So one standard deviation either side of the mean, we've got around about 68% of all of the values. Within two standard deviations of the mean, we have about 95% of all of the values. And within three standard deviations, 99% of all of the possible values we get. So that gives us a rough guide whether data is appropriately modeled by a normal distribution also. Here's an example of distributions that have the same standard deviations but different means. You can see the blue one on the right, the mean is higher than the one in red. And as I was pointing out before, here's some examples of normal distributions where the mean is the same but the standard deviations are different. You can see the greater the standard deviation, the more spread out it is. So the blue one has the biggest standard deviation and the black curve there has the smaller standard deviation. All right, back in the good old days, um, we used to have tables to look up these values for the normal distribution function. The tables were specifically done for one particular normal distribution. It's called the standard normal distribution. And it's this one right here that has a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. Now, this curve here has the property, like a continuous random variable that's a probability density function, it has the property that the area under the curve 
is equal to one. So the, that area is equal to one. So using some, um, not integration, because I'll show you the equation of this curve in a sec, but using some numerical methods, someone was able to calculate all the areas under the curve for all these different, what we call Z values along the bottom here. And that gave rise to this table here. It allows you to calculate all the areas or probabilities. We're going to use our calculator, but I just wanted to show you the uh, nostalgia part of this video. So answering questions like this, um, if we got 65% English, only 57% uh, 57 physics, class means and standard deviations were that and that respectively, in which subject did Antoine appear to do better? So this is a really good question because it's not obvious just because he got better in English that actually he overall compared to the rest of the class, um, he, he actually did better. So there's a, the way that we're going to approach this is we're going to look at what's called a standard score. All right, A standard score is one in which we just compare how many standard deviations above or below the mean a certain score is. Okay. So the standard score is just you take the value that you got, subtract off the mean, and divide by the standard deviation. So this standard score tells you basically how many standard deviations above or below the mean is your score. So let's look at this for English. The standard score for English, he had a score of 65, the mean for English was 62, and the standard deviation was 8. So 3 over 8 is his standard score, or we might write 0 0.375. So that's how many standard deviations above the mean his score was for English. Now let's look at physics. His score was 57% for physics. The mean for physics was 52%. And the standard deviation for physics was 10%. So 57 minus 52 is 5 over 10, which is 0 0.5. Okay, so in which test did he do better? Well, in physics he actually did better because he was half a standard deviation above the mean. Whereas in English, he was only 0.375 of a standard deviation of the mean. So comparing the scores this way, we can see that compared to his classmates, he actually did better in physics in this case. So here's how we use the normal distribution to solve realistic problems. Uh, here's that formula that I was just pointing out about the stand, how we standardize a score. We normally use Z to represent a standardized score. So it's this x minus the mean over the standard deviation. It gives us that z value or the, the number of standard deviations above or below the mean. So I'm going to show you kind of an old, um, the way that you do this without your calculator and not exactly using the tables, but then we'll go for how you'd use your CAS calculator to do this, these kind of problems. So here's the problem. The waiting time to order in a fast food restaurant is normally distributed with mean 3.5 minutes and standard deviation is 0.8 minutes. So you can see that we've got the graph down here. The mean is 3.5, right there in the middle. And the standard deviation is 0.8. So we'd expect if we added on three lots of 0.8 or 2.4 minutes from there, we'd be right down the end here. Three standard deviations either side of the mean. Okay. So the question, first question says, find the probability that a randomly chosen customer will wait for longer than four minutes. So you can see on this graph here, I've drawn it out, longer than four minutes is that area underneath the curve. Now how many standard deviations above the mean does a score of four represent here? You can see the calculation, it's 0.625 standard deviations above the mean. So if I write it as a standard normal distribution, you can see this, this score here is 0 0.625. So now in the old days, we'd go for our tables, look up 0 0.625 in the table. The tables uh, that I showed you always give the score from that value down. So that would give you that area there. Subtract that from one, gives you 
the area or probability that we're looking for. So just like probability density functions, the area is one. So we're always looking at areas here and that's the equivalent of probability. So here is how we do a really similar problem using our CAS calculator. So imagine that we've got a population of weights mean 65 and standard deviation 12 kilos. And we want to know what's the probability that a randomly chosen person weighs between 60 and 75. Now, it's, it's a real shame that, that our calculator just does all the work without us having to even think about this. Um, it's going to be a real advantage later on, particularly if you can have some understanding of what's going on here. So drawing a diagram with the mean here in the middle, which is 65. and a standard deviation of 12. Now I can't really draw that in there, but if you think a standard deviation of 12, three standard deviations here, which is 36. So 65 plus 36 gives you just over 100, 101. So right at the end here, we're gonna be up at 101 kilos. And if we subtracted 36 as well, that would give us down here. So 99% of all the values are within three standard deviations of the mean. So we wanna know the probability that a randomly chosen person is between 60 and 75. Okay, so that means down here at 60 and then up here at 75. So really the question is saying, what is that area there underneath the curve? So on our calculator, the way that we do it is in main, we go interactive, continuous, and norm CDF. So get your calculator out so that you can get the same answer here to, to make sure that um, that you can get the right values in there and get this right. So an interactive, continuous, norm CDF. Then you get this menu here. So you need to put in the lower value we want, which is 60, the upper value. Then we uh, want the standard deviation and lastly the mean. Click on OK, and it gives us the answer of 0.459210, etc., etc. So if you just write 0.459, that would be fine. So norm CDF, the order here is important. Lowest value, high value, so it's between those two values, then the standard deviation, and lastly the mean. If we wanted to work out the chance of being 60 and above, and if I just click back to my diagram, I can see that that probability, 60 and above, would be greater than 0.5, because this point here, the mean, half of the values above, half of the values are below. So we can see because 60 is below the mean here, that the probability of being greater than 60 would be greater than 0.5. So this is what we type in our calculator, same, same series of key strokes. The lower is 60, the upper infinity. So we're going up from 60 to ever. Uh, the same 12 for the standard deviation, 65 for the mean. And we should get for this one, 0.6615 or 0.662 for the answer. So just check you can get those on your calculator.